Hey everybody, this is Kevin from Klotz Productions, and this is Game 3 of the semifinals between Corey and Chris at the Scars of Mirrodin launch party. Chris was on the play this game, however, Corey played the first spell this time in the form of a Horizon spell bomb. Chris played Land Go again for a second turn, and then Corey brought down a Copper Mirror. Chris finally played his first spell of the game, which was a Nurok replica, and then Corey simply laid down a land on his turn and passed it back. Chris then played an Origin Spell Bomb, and then he attacked with his replica, which Corey decided not to block. Then post combat, he cracked his Origin Spell Bomb to make a mirror token and draw a card. At the end of Chris's turn, Corey used two lands and a copper mirror to crack his Horizon Spell Bomb to draw a card and search for an island. Corey then resolved a Riddle Smith. He then cast a Glen Talk Idol, which he used to draw a card, and then he discarded a mountain. He then attacked for one with his Copper Mirror, which Chris decided to block with his token. For Chris's next turn, he played a Trigon of Infestation. Corey then cast a Mirror Galvanizer and then used it to activate the Riddle Smith's ability to draw a card and discard a Plains. He also animated his Glint Hawk with its ability and then attacked with it for two damage in the air. Chris then resolved a Tumble Magnet and passed the turn. Corey then cast an Indomitable Archangel, which upon review he didn't pay for correctly. However, nobody caught it, so he hit the board. He then used his other planes to animate his Glen Hawk Idol and attack for two. At the end of Corey's turn, Chris used his Trigon of Infestation to make himself a 1 1 insect. Chris then attacked with his insect, which Corey decided to block with his Mirror Galvanizer. Then, post combat, he resolved it of a Dock and Surtark. Going into Corey's next combat phase, Chris used his Tumble Magnet to tap Corey's Angel, and then Corey animated his Glint Hawk Idol and attacked for two. Then, at the end of the turn, Chris used his Trigon to make himself another insect. Chris then attacked with his insect, which Corey decided to trade for with his Galvanizer. Chris then resolved a second Vidalk and Surtark post combat and passed the turn. On Corey's next turn, he animated his Glint Hawk Idol, and then in pre combat, Chris tapped the Idol and the Angel using his Sir Tark and his Tumble Magnet. Then, post combat, Corey used a Galvanic Blast to kill the other Sir Tark. At the end of the turn, Chris used his last counter on his Trigon to make an insect. For Chris's next turn, he simply resolved a Perilous Mirror. Corey animated his Glint Hawk Idol again, and then this time during pre-combat, Chris used his Sir Tark to tap the Angel, but decides to go ahead and take the other two from the Hawk. Then on Chris's next turn, he attacked with his Mirror, his Replica, and his Insect, which got through to Corey for three damage. This also caused Corey to receive one Poison Counter. Post-combat, Chris resolved a Dark Slick Drake. Corey then resolved a Grand Architect and passed the turn. At the end of the turn, though, Chris used his Sir Tark to tap Corey's Angel, and then Corey took the opportunity to use a Bond of Quicksilver on the Sir Tark. For Chris's turn, he attacked with his Perilous Mirror again, which Corey decided to take. Then, post combat, he resolved a Razor Filled Thresher. For Corey's next turn, he animated his Idol again. Then, pre combat, Chris used the last counter on his Tumble Magnet to tap Corey's Angel. He then attacked with the Hawk Idol, which Chris decided to block with his Drake, so Corey used his Architect to turn the Hawk Idol into a blue creature, making it a 3-3 and keeping it from dying. For Chris's next turn, he attacked with his Razor Field Thresher, however, Corey destroyed it with a Shatter. Corey then animated his Idol again and attacked with the Idol and the Angel. Chris decided to block the Idol with his Drake. So Corey used his Architect to keep it alive, and then the other four damage from the Angel got through to Chris. Then post-combat, Corey resolved a Glimmer Point Stag. He removed his own Angel with the Stag, and then it came back at the end of the turn untapped. Chris didn't play any new spells on his next turn, and then for Corey's turn, he started off by playing a Gold Mirror, and then using his Riddle Smith to draw a card and discard a Plains. Corey's Glint Hawk Idol was now animated into a creature because of the Gold Mirror, and he used it and his Angel to attack. Chris decided to chump block the Angel with his Drake, and then Corey made his Idol a 3-3 with his Architect. Then Chris drew a card when the Drake went into the graveyard. Then post-combat, Corey resolved Razor Hippogriff, which he used to get his Mirror Galvanizer back and gain 3 life. 
He then tapped his grand architect and his riddle smith to create the mana to cast his mere galvanizer. When the galvanizer came into play, he used the riddle smith's ability to draw a card and discard a mountain. When Cory finally ended his turn, Chris used a disperse to return his tumble magnet back to his hand. Chris then cast a prototype portal and used it to imprint his tumble magnet. Cory then used a volition reins to take Chris's prototype portal. So in response, he used the portal to make himself another tumble magnet. Cory animated his glint hawk idol again, and then during pre-combat, Chris used the tumble magnet to tap the angel. However, Cory attacked with everything this turn, and after doing the math, he was able to swing for lethal and win the game and the match.